They were born into one of the most dangerous polygamous cults in history, and their father was the leader. Before we speak with Anna and Cecilia LeBaron, or Anna, rather, here is their story. I was uh, 13 years old when I ran away from home, and I didn't know I was running away from a cult because I didn't know I was in one. Ervil LeBaron fathered more than 50 children after founding the fundamentalist Mormon religious cult known as the Church of the Lamb of God in the early 70s. So it's having more than one wife at the same time, otherwise known as polygamy. The other one was the doctrine of blood atonement, which means in essence, that there are some sins the blood of Christ can't cover. And so you have to atone for that sin with the shedding of your own blood. Followers were told to carry out the blood atonements for him. It's believed that Ervil is responsible for the deaths of over 30 people. Now keep in mind, both of these doctrines were early Latter-day Mormon or uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint teachings. The modern day LDS church has disavowed those teachings, which is where my father comes in and his family saying that you can't leave those teachings behind. After the first killing, Ervil and his followers live life on the run. I would say that we endured um, every kind of childhood developmental trauma that you can imagine, every kind you're imagining and probably some that you haven't thought of. Oh my gosh, horrifying. Ervil Lebron, or LeBaron rather, was found guilty of his crimes within the cult and died in prison in 1981. All of his children have disavowed his teachings, including Anna. She joins us live to tell us more about their survival. Anna, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to be able to talk to your audience. Absolutely, and thank you for being a, uh, a testimony teacher, as Erica calls it, for our audience. Paint the picture for us of the days where you were growing up in the cult. What was it like? Well, we lived in abject poverty. We were on the run from the law and there were uh, so many abuses that we endured, um, including uh, child slave labor, financial abuse, um, you name it, um, psychological, religious trauma, emotional neglect, every kind of neglect. Wow. And um, the adults were very concerned about what was happening among the adults. And so there was very little time to worry about the concerns of the needs of the children. Mm. Mm. Anna, can you tell us about the day you first met your father? Oh, yes. Um, I had been taken to Mexico. Again, we were on the run a lot. So um, my mom had uh, left us in Mexico with a family that were converts to my father's religion. And these were people I didn't know. Mm. And so um, one of the times that uh, my father was on his way to come and stay for a bit because he was on the run. So he only stayed briefly anywhere. We were um, asked to prepare for his visit by covering the windows with bed sheets because we didn't want any outsiders to know that my father was present in the home. So that was the first time I met my father, Ervil LeBaron. I was nine years old and you know he was this towering figure at six foot four. And oh my gosh, we were in awe of him because that's what we were taught. We were taught to revere him. I mean, the word that you keep using is taught. And one of the best things about kids is they can adapt to almost anything. But that really kind of hampers you because you don't really realize what's going on. So when did you realize that you were raised in a cult? Well, I got out of the cult when I was 13, but it wasn't until a few years later in my late teens that I found a book in my sister's things. And I was living with my half sister at the time. I found a book she had hidden away called the Prophet of Blood, um, the untold story of Ervil LeBaron and the Church of the Lamb of God. And oh my gosh, I read for the very first time about all the people who had been killed up to that time, um, all the atrocities that had been committed. And it was so earth shattering for me to find these things out about my own family and the ways that they had harmed people in this world. 
I can't even imagine what you've had to process, but look at you overcoming it all. Yeah. It seems impossible, but clearly you are. Anna, mm -hmm. thank you for your courage. Thank you for sharing your story with us today on mm -hmm. DBL. To our viewers, mm -hmm. to learn more about their story, ABC News Studios' Daughters of the Colt is now available to stream on Hulu. Thank you again.